Greek orthography has used a variety of diacritics starting in the Hellenistic period. The complex polytonic orthography notates ancient Greek phonology. The simple monotonic orthography, introduced in 1982, corresponds to modern Greek phonology, and requires only two diacritics. Polytonic orthography is the standard system for ancient Greek and medieval Greek. The acute accent, the grave accent, and the circumflex indicate different kinds of pitch accent. The rough breathing indicates the presence of the power hour sound before a letter, while the smooth breathing indicates the absence of power hour. Since in modern Greek the pitch accent has been replaced by a dynamic accent and the power hour was lost, most polytonic diacritics have no phonetic significance and merely reveal the underlying ancient Greek etymology. Monotonic orthography is the standard system for modern Greek. It retains two diacritics, a single accent to tonos, which indicates stress and the diaresis, which usually indicates a hiatus but occasionally indicates a diphthong. Compare modern Greek pi alpha iota delta alpha kappa iota alpha with a diphthong and pi alpha iota delta alpha kappa iota alpha with a simple vowel. A tonos and a diaresis can be combined on a single vowel to indicate a stressed vowel after a hiatus, as in the verb tau alpha iota zeta omega. Although it is not a diacritic, the hyperdiastole has in a similar way the function of a sound-changing diacritic in a handful of Greek words, principally distinguishing omicron tau iota from omicron tau iota. History The original Greek alphabet did not have any diacritics. The Greek alphabet is attested since the 8th century BC, until 403 BC. Variations of the Greek alphabet which used capitals exclusively, were used in different cities and areas. From 403 on, the Athenians decided to employ a version of the Ionian alphabet. With the spread of Con Greek, a continuation of the Attic dialect, the Ionic alphabet superseded more or less quickly the other alphabets, called Epochoric. The Ionian alphabet, however, was also made up only of capitals. Introduction of breathings The rough and smooth breathings were introduced in classical times in order to represent the presence or absence of an para in Attic Greek, which had adopted a form of the alphabet in which the letter eight the was no longer available for this purpose as it was used to represent the long vowel. Introduction of accents During the Hellenistic period, Aristophanes of Byzantium introduced the breathings, marks of aspiration and the accents, of which the use started to spread, to become standard in the Middle Ages. It wasn't until the 2nd century AD that the accents and breathings appeared sporadically in the papyri. The need for the diacritics arose from the gradual divergence between spelling and pronunciation. Unseal script, the majuscule, I, E, a system where text is written entirely in capital letters, was used until the 8th century, when the minuscule polytonic supplanted it. Grave accent rule. By the Byzantine period, the modern rule which turns an acute accent on the last syllable into a grave accent, except before a punctuation sign or an enclitic, had been firmly established. Certain authors have argued that the grave originally denoted the absence of accent. The modern rule is, in the view, a purely orthographic convention. Originally certain proclitic words lost their accent before another word and received the grave, and later this was generalized to all words in the orthography. Others, drawing e, g, on evidence from ancient Greek music, consider that the grave was linguistically real and expressed a word final modification of the acute pitch. Stress accent. In the later development of the language, the ancient pitch accent was replaced by an intensity a stress accent, making the three types of accent identical, and the power hour sound became silent. 
simplification. At the beginning of the 20th century, the grave was replaced by the acute and the iod subscript and the breathings on the row were abolished. Except in printed texts, Greek typewriters from that era did not have keys for the grave accent of the iota subscript, and these diacritics were also not taught in primary schools where instruction was in demotic. Official adoption of monotonic system. Following the official adoption of the demotic form of the language, the monotonic orthography was imposed by law in 1982. The latter uses only the acute accent and diuresis and omits the breathings. This simplification has been criticized on the grounds that polytonic orthography provides a cultural link to the past. Modern use of polytonic system. Some individuals, institutions, and publishers continue to prefer the polytonic system, though an official reintroduction of the polytonic system does not seem probable. The Greek Greek Orthodox Church, for example, continues to use polytonic orthography, and some books and the daily newspaper Estira are still published in polytonic, especially those few still written in Kathrevousa. Though the polytonic system was not used in classical Greece, these critics argue that modern Greek, as a continuation of Byzantine and post-medieval Greek, should e continue the writing conventions. Some text Books of ancient Greek for foreigners have retained the breathings, but dropped all the accents in order to simplify the task from the learner. Description Polytonic Greek uses many different diacritics in several categories. At the time of ancient Greek, each of these marked a significant distinction in pronunciation. Monotonic orthography from modern Greek uses only two diacritics, the tonos and diuresis that have significance in pronunciation. Initial para is no longer pronounced, and so the rough and smooth breathings are no longer necessary. The unique pitch pattern of the three accents have disappeared, and only a stress accent remains. The iod subscript was a diacritic invented to mark an etymological vowel that was no longer pronounced, so it was dispensed with as well. The transliteration of the Greek names follows Latin transliteration of ancient Greek. Modern transliteration is different, and does not distinguish many letters and digraphs that have merged by ioticism. Accents The accents are placed on an accented vowel or on the last of the two vowels of a diphthong and indicated pitch patterns in ancient Greek. The precise nature of the patterns is not certain, but the general nature of each is known. The acute accent alpha marked high pitch on a short vowel a rising pitch on a long vowel. The acute is also used on the last of two successive vowels in modern Greek to indicate that they are pronounced pronounced together as a stress diphthong. The grave accent marked normal a low pitch. The grave was originally written on all unaccented syllables, but now only replaces the acute at the end of a word if another accented word follows immediately without punctuation. The circumflex marked high and falling pitch within one syllable. In distinction to the angled Latin circumflex, the Greek circumflex is printed in the form of either a tilde or an inverted brie. It was also known as Xi Upsilon Beta Alpha Rho Upsilon Sigma Oxyberis High Low or Acute Grave and its original form was from a combining of the acute and grave diacritics. Because of its compound nature it only appeared on long vowels or diphthongs. Breathings The breathings were written over a vowel or R. The rough breathing indicates a voiceless glottal fricative before the vowel in ancient Greek. In Greek grammar, this is known as aspiration. This is different from aspiration in phonetics, which applies to consonants, not vowels. Rho at the beginning of a word always takes rough breathing, probably marking unvoiced pronunciation. In Latin, this was transcribed as rh. Upsilon at the beginning of a word always takes rough breathing.
Thus, words from Greek begin with hi, never with y. The smooth breathing marked the absence of par hour. A double row in the middle of a word was originally written with smooth breathing on the first row and rough breathing on the second one. In Latin, this was transcribed as a rh. Coronus the coronus marks a vowel contracted by crasis. It was formerly an apostrophe placed after the contracted vowel, but is now placed over the vowel and is identical to the smooth breathing. Unlike the smooth breathing, it often occurs inside a word. Subscript The iota subscript is placed under the long vowels eta and omega to mark the ancient long diphthongs iota, eta, iota, and omega iota, in which the iota is no longer pronounced. Add script next to a capital. The iota subscript is usually written as a lowercase letter, in which case it is called iota at script. Diaresis in ancient Greek, the diaresis iota appears on the letters iota in upside to show that a pair of vowel letters is pronounced separately, rather than as a diphthong. In modern Greek, the diaresis usually indicates that two successive vowels are pronounced separately, but occasionally, it marks vowels that are pronounced together as an unstressed diphthong rather than as a digraph. The distinction between two separate vowels and a diphthong is not always clear, although two separate vowels are far more common. The diaresis can be combined with the acute, grave and circumflex but never with breathings, since the letter with the diaresis cannot be the first vowel of the word. In modern Greek, the combination of the acute and diaresis indicates a stressed vowel after a hiatus. Vowel length. In textbooks and dictionaries of ancient Greek, the macron and brief are often used over alpha, iota, and upsilon to indicate that they are long or short, respectively. Position in letters. The diacritics are written above lowercase letters and at the upper left of capital letters. In the case of a diphthong or a digraph the second vowel takes the diacritics. A breathing diacritic is written to the left of an acute to grave accent but below a circumflex. Accents are written above a diaresis or between its two dots. When a word is written entirely in capital letters, diacritics are far less used. The word is an exception to this rule because of the need to distinguish it from the nominative feminine article eta. Diacritics can be found above capital letters in medieval texts. The diaresis is always written. Examples Computer encoding. There have been problems in representing polytonic Greek on computers, and in displaying polytonic Greek on computer screens and printouts. But these have largely been overcome by the advent of Unicode and appropriate fonts. Unicode. While the tonos of monotonic orthography look similar to the oxia of polytonic orthography in most fonts, Unicode has historically separate symbols for letters with these diacritics. For example, a monotonic Greek small letter alpha with tonos is a 2 plus 03 AC, while the polytonic Greek small letter alpha with oxia is a 2 plus 1 F71. The monotonic and polytonic accent however have been de jure equivalent, since 1986, and accordingly the oxia diacritic in Unicode decomposes canonically to the monotonic tonos. Both are underlyingly treated as equivalent to the Latin acute accent, U plus 0301. Below are the accented characters provided in Unicode. In the uppercase letters, the iota adscript may appear as subscript depending on font.